What is going on you guys? Welcome back to another video. In this video, I'm gonna be changing the transmission pan gasket because it is leaking. I'm kind of surprised this gasket is already leaking and the car only has 60,000 miles. Um, on my E90, the transmission pan wasn't leaking and it had 100,000 miles, but I did get it service anyway. Um, so that I guess that's what comes with owning a BMW. They just have a bunch of leaks. I'm used to it, honestly. And honestly, the transmission seems like it's kind of shifting not so smoothly. I feel like it should be shifting smoother. I figured maybe it's because it's leaking. Um, I'm not 100% sure, but I guess we'll find out by the time I'm finished with this. But anyway, let's jump right into it. So I have my new transmission pan here. It comes with a new gasket, as you can see. It comes with the filter already installed. I believe it's underneath here. And then some new bolts to secure it in place. And then a new fill plug, as you can see right here. I also have some ZF transmission fluid, since we're gonna have to drain the fluid. This kit is once again from FCP Euro. It comes in a complete kit with everything you need. So this is perfect if you're going to do this job. You don't have to go searching for each of these parts individually. FCP Euro has it all in one kit. I did buy this fluid pump separately from Amazon. It only costs $9. And then I have some tools here that I'm going to be using. I already got the car on jack stands, so it should be ready to go. So here is the transmission. The drain plug is going to be right there. And then the fill plug is going to be right here on the side. As you can see, the liquid right there and the shiny finish that is on the bottom of the transmission pan indicating that it's leaking. So the first thing I'm going to do here is remove this little shield that's held on by a few 8mm bolts along the edges there. So the next thing I'm going to do is remove this little shield here. It's just held on by three of these 13 millimeter bolts. I realized that there wasn't enough room to fit the socket in there. There's only enough room for the middle bolt, but the two outer bolts you're going to have to use a wrench. The next thing I'm going to do here is crack open the fill plug before we open the drain plug. This is when you're going to need to use your 8mm Allen to break it open. Come on. Alright, so for some reason this bolt is extremely tight on there. And as you can see, I stripped it pretty bad. So kinda having some complications here. So I looked up if there's a way to get this bolt out. And someone suggested using one of these nipple extractors that are for pipes, I guess. 
So I'm gonna try this and see if this gets this bolt out so we can continue the process. So I finally broke the fill plug loose after a, quite a bit of struggle. This is why you want to do the fill plug first before you do the drain plug because if you do this one first and you can't get the fill plug out then that's going to be a huge annoyance and inconvenience that you have to solve. So if you do this one first and let's say like my situation where you can't get it out the transmission fluid is still in there, so you can still drive it to a shop or something if you can't figure out how to get this bolt off. But I just showed you that you could use one of these uh, nipple pipe extractors to break it free if in the case that you round it off. So that's a huge relief. Alright, so now I'm going to remove the drain plug. This is when I use my 10 millimeter hex here. See your drain pan underneath All right, so as you can see, transmission fluid is almost out, and it looks pretty brown. I'm not sure if that's what it's supposed to look like, but... So now that the transmission fluid is pretty much drained completely out, I'm going to start unscrewing these T40 Torx bolts that are holding the transmission pan up against the bottom of the transmission. So I'm going to take my T40 Torx bit here and break all of these free. They should be pretty easy to break free since they're only supposed to be torqued down to around 10 newton meters. Alright, so I got the transmission pan off, 
And one thing to note, just make sure there's a little O-ring right there. Make sure that comes out of the little pump up there. As you can see, mine came out, so just make sure that comes out when you do this. Before I put on the new transmission pan, I'm going to clean the surface where the gas is going to sit. Alright, so now we're going to torque down all of these bolts to 10 newton meters. There is a specific sequence that you're supposed to follow when torquing these down so that the oil pan seats evenly across the bottom of the transmission. I'll put up a diagram so you guys can see that and get a visual of what exactly I'm doing. Alright, so with all the bolts torqued down, we can go ahead and remove the fill plug completely. I have my little setup here like this. I have the pump and the bottle of new transmission fluid and I'm going to pump it into the fill plug. So I'm gonna keep pumping until transmission fluid begins to pour out of the fill hole there. That's how you know that it is full. So once it starts pouring out like this, that's how you know that the transmission pan is full. Now I'm going to temporarily reinstall the fill plug. All right, so now I'm gonna use my little Foxwell scanner. I'm gonna be using this scanner to measure the transmission oil temperature of the fluid that we just put in. It's gonna to need to be at a temperature of around 40 to 50 degrees Celsius before we refill the transmission again with more fluid.
You can see this little section here that has live data. And we need to get to transmission oil temperature. There it is. Now I'm going to start the car. So what I'm going to do is go through all of the gears. I'm going to go through reverse, neutral, drive. And then I'm going to do all of the manual gears and then go through each gear for a few seconds so that all the transmission fluid flows throughout the entire transmission and everything gets lubricated. This should adjust the level in there and it should go down so I should need to refill it. So now we should just have to wait till the transmission temperature gets up to temp. Let's, see. Let's view the data here. As you can see, it's at 91 degrees Fahrenheit right now. So as I said, it's supposed to get in between 40 to 50 degrees Celsius, which is 104 to 122 degrees Fahrenheit. So we're slowly climbing up there. All right, so I've reached 104 degrees Fahrenheit, which is the minimum, which is 40 degrees Celsius. Uh, but I'll just wait and see if it goes any higher. All right, so I'm at 108 degrees Fahrenheit, so we're pretty much almost in the middle of the threshold between 40 and 50 degrees Celsius. So now we can go ahead and turn off the car and refill the transmission with more fluid. All right, so it looks like it's completely full. As you can see, it's dripping quite a bit. So the kit comes with a new fill plug, thankfully. Uh, I figured they assumed the bolt may round off. So now we can reinstall the new fill plug. Once it doesn't want to move anymore, then you're good. Alright guys, so that finishes up this transmission pan replacement along with the fluid change. As you saw, you could run into some complications with the fill plug. If it's really tight on there, you might round it off. But there is a tool you could use to uh, kind of grab on to whatever parts round it off and then it just gets it out of there. I'll definitely link that down below if you run into that issue because that's pretty 
important. I'll also link down the full transmission service kit that I used and some tools that may help you with this job. I actually ended up only using about three and a half of these bottles of new transmission fluid, um, which is around what most people say they use. So it gives you plenty of fluid, uh, maybe even for the next service you may do in the future. But uh, I'm gonna take the car off the jack stand now and go for a drive to make sure she's running how she should be running. Looks good so far. Alright guys, so I just got back from a little test drive and it seems that everything is running smoothly. The transmission shifts smoothly. Um, I'd like to think that it shifts a little bit smoother, but I'm not sure. Uh, it didn't seem fine, so there's no issues. Now with this replacement out of the way, there's only two things left for the F30 that I need to replace. Uh, it's the oil pan gasket and then a couple of uh, turbo return lines. I think I'm going to take it to the shop to get those done because the oil pan gasket seems like a massive task that is way too much for me, way out of my experience level. And I'd rather have someone who's done this before do it. So uh, yeah, along with the turbo lines, I may just have them do that at the same time. Um, I can't really find the parts or what, where are the, I don't even know what parts they are exactly uh, to do the turbo return line replacement. But now is the time that I'm going to start looking into some mods. I've already kind of been looking, but now I'm going to start focusing on finding some mods. Uh, I'm going to start with the suspension first, so I'm probably going to do some coilovers and maybe some spacers and get some new tires. And then once I get that out of the way, I'll probably do some more performance mods and then exterior mods and whatnot. So I got a lot planned for this car and I can't wait. Again, I will link down all of the parts and the tools that I used for this little DIY here. And as usual, if you have any comments or questions, feel free to comment those down below. But I will catch you guys on the next one.